Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are going to take care of this little orchid which I have potted in this wonderful swan planter that I absolutely adore. But as the story goes with orchids, they always outgrow their pots, which this one is doing right now. Do we see? The new growth here is smack on the edge of the pot. Yeah, at this point there's really nothing I can do to train it, but it's okay. I want to reuse this planter with a different type of plant. Don't worry, it's not going anywhere because I love it. And I will pot this orchid in a more traditional, let's say, orchid setup. What I'm curious to see is how easy it is to unpot this orchid. Because I already have some roots at the bottom, maybe you can see. And since this is not plastic, it cannot really squeeze on it to detach the roots from the sides of the plastic. And also, it is glazed clay. The roots will stick like nothing else to this thing. So this might end up in disaster, but we're gonna see. I decided to take you guys along just to have a discussion about these types of planters and if it's okay to pot orchids in something like this rather than the traditional transparent pot. So before we move on, as I am getting ready for the operation, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. And hey, why not subscribe? I post three times a week. Alrighty then, hmm. how fancy is this? <laughs> All right, so I've had this orchid in this planter for a while, not sure if a year, maybe almost. I do think I filmed when I potted this orchid in this planter. I will link you to it down below. I do believe it was a video with unconventional setups or things of the sorts. And orchids can absolutely grow in pretty much whatever type of planter slash basket slash container at the end of the day you can think of. Whatever you like, they can grow in it as long as you can provide aeration, especially with epiphytic orchids, which this one is, I didn't tell you what this is, it's the Leptotis bicolor. So I did make sure that there is a lot of aeration in this pot using materials that are appropriate for that. So really there was no reason for this orchid not to do well. It also bloomed in the meantime and it just looked pretty. However though, the problem is when it's time to repot because see, unlike other houseplants, Orchids don't really like to be disturbed. And when I say disturbed, I don't mean jiggling the orchid around or actually removing it from the pot, but damaging the root system. That's one of the, let's say, soft spots of most orchids. If the root system gets damaged enough, the orchid will get a lot of feedback. It's just gonna be miserable for a while. With a traditional setup, which implies a transparent plastic pot usually, it's really, really easy to repot orchids and to make the transition into a new pot as seamlessly as possible because all we need to do is just press a little bit on this pot, which I'm not gonna do a whole lot. I don't wanna detach this orchid. And the roots detach from this pot like that. What was that? <laughs> anyway, bottom line, roots don't really suffer a lot of damage if detached from these types of pots. I'm not gonna talk about the damage of removing the medium from the roots or damage from the roots growing outside the pot, that's minimal damage. I'm talking real over 80% damage. That's a problem. So this is a very safe and useful setup for orchids because they do have this little sensitivity when it comes to repotting. So obviously an orchid which is potted into something which is not so easy to detach from the roots might suffer a little bit. Fingers crossed that it won't but we're gonna find out. So how should we go about this? Because obviously I cannot squeeze. Well, gonna try to insert a finger somewhere inside the pot, maybe on both sides, somewhere under the orchid. What I want is to pretty much catch the rhizome and pull her up from there. If I start to do this, I'm gonna have the poor leaves and the canes in my fingers. We don't want that. So as much as possible, maybe one finger, go under the orchid and pull up gently. Don't do it all at once, just see where there's resistance. So let's see, there is a bit of resistance pretty much everywhere. <laughs> but easy does it. Also, I forgot to tell you, the medium is indeed wet. I watered this orchid prior just to make the roots more flexible. So now I'm gonna try to like pinch the orchid, jiggle it a little, little bit and lift it up from under the rhizome. Oh no! 
Oh no. Remember that problem that I had with that fungus, the white mold fungus thing? Mm. I remember now. I repotted this orchid during that time. Yes, I used contaminated bark. Oh boy, this will not smell good. Well, we have to do it. So, again, taking my time, jiggling the orchid a little bit, hoping I'm not gonna break anything. Always under the orchid. Better to break roots than pseudobulbs. Okay, that's not bad. Oh, this medium right now. Wow, all right. Oh, I did lose one single root. Other than that, everything is okay. Yes. Okay, so actually it wasn't that bad. As you can see, keyword here, wet the medium. All right, so I'm gonna go clean the circuit up outside, not in the greenhouse, because I know this fungus very, very well. And I'm gonna spray the roots of the orchid with hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Now we're gonna come back and discuss a little bit more. All righty then, we're back, we're all sanitized. And a little backstory for those of you who are new. Last year, I stored my bark outside on the terrace. Big mistake, because it got contaminated with a sort of fungus. It doesn't smell good and I don't want to do my plant room. And in that period, I did have a few projects, including the terrarium. That one got overrun with the fungus. My Monstera, the Albo variegata, that one as well was riddled with that fungus. It even grew mushrooms, the yellow mushrooms, which later I found out they're quite toxic. A Phalaenopsis, I think there were a few from that period, but I don't remember them. I kind of spotted them. This one, I remember now. I repotted it in a video called For Unique Setups, something of the sorts. Yeah, it was from that time. And all of these orchids were actually potted in that contaminated bark. And now that I'm talking about it, I need to check the vanilla. The vanilla, I think, is the last one from that period. And if my calculations are correct, I actually used the contaminated bark on the vanilla as well. Let's just see now. Oh, oh my goodness, do you see it? Oh yeah, it's there. Look at it. It's not perlite, it's the actual fungus. I knew it, I knew it. Oh no. Yeah, I need to do something about the vanilla. Another reason why typically we go for transparent pots, because we can see what's going on in the medium, particularly for beginners, it's a good idea. But as you could see, the orchids can grow in whatever type of pot. There are some pros to something like this. There are also cons. Luckily though, that fungus didn't come back with the bark that I have. Oh my goodness, where's the sun? I'm suddenly super underexposed. Oh, right. It got really, really cloudy all of a sudden. Oh, do you think it's gonna rain? Oh my gosh, I hope so. Usually in my area, it rains in November. Stops raining in May, rains again in November. I miss the rain like you would not believe. Anyway, I digress. So that's the backstory with the fungus. I'll link you to a whole lot of videos about it down below. It's a good idea to check them out and keep that in mind, because that's not a good fungus. Now that I think about it, the vanilla is not very, very happy. Oh, what if the medium is infected? I really, really need to go address it. Okay, so how I'm gonna pot this orchid is in my traditional way with a mixture of sphagnum moss and bark. And if you're a little bit sad that we won't have that beautiful planter to stare at anymore in my videos, don't worry, I'm gonna use a really pretty planter as well for this one, and that one, I will use it for something else. Don't you even worry. I'm thinking to get a few succulents, why not? I love my shelves, how they are with a sort of a variety of plants, mainly orchids, but a few other types of plants kind of add a little bit of a twist there. There's that went into my shoe. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, it's a piece of moss that went into my shoe. All right. Twist there, there. Okay, so I find that the different textures kind of emphasize the orchids in a weird way. Do you guys grow other types of plants together with your orchids, like in the same shelf? I'm quite digging it at the moment, so I'm gonna stick with it. So I was thinking for that swan planter to go for a little succulent. With succulents, what I usually do is use non-drainage pots. I know, right? I would not do that if I were you. I'm gonna do it because I'm overly confident. <laughs> oh, here's the sun again. Look at that picture, I'm a ghost. My camera is actually not set on auto because whenever I move my hands or something happens, the exposure fluctuates and it's a whole mess. I used to do that 
few years ago and somebody actually in the comments pointed it out and yeah they were so right it was pretty annoying so my camera is on full manual right now i prefer to control exposure focus all of that just so the image stays the same now when the sun is not the same, that's kind of out of my powers. Anyway, so yeah, the swan planter will definitely be back on the shelf once again with a beautiful, beautiful, maybe succulent, maybe, I don't know if cacti, it's, it's a little weird because I sometimes do put my hands on the shelves to get an orchid, look at it. I'm sure I'm gonna get prickled on a regular basis. So maybe not cacti. Maybe ones that don't have really nasty spines, but definitely a cute succulent or a small plant. Yeah, I don't know. I need to go to the flower shop and open my heart <laughs> because up until now I went to the flower shop and my vision was only focused on work kids. I kind of had tunnel vision, but now a whole world has opened <laughs> because I kind of look at other things as well. And I have to say, I don't like most things, but some things are just very, very cute. Ooh, I'm shedding. Me and Maya, we're both shedding. Oh, you're joking. Oh no, the sun is going away again. <laughs> Alrighty then, we're all done. Let me just get my decorative pot. Oh, Maya has to lay an egg, maybe later tonight. And whenever she's like that, she's just so miserable. She doesn't even laugh properly. <laughs> all right, so here it is. This is a really pretty metal, I think it's aluminum type of decorative container from Ikea. And I think it's so, so pretty, isn't it? It's also very light since I will keep the circuit on the glass shelves. I don't want heavy clay decorative pots. So these are just great. Look how pretty. Oh. <laughs> I think it's lovely. And since my barinas actually emphasize pink, this little pink pot will look even better. Speaking about emphasizing colors, let me just show you something really fast. Let me show you how my Bangkok sunset looks in the shelves. It, it blew my mind. <laughs> so here's how she looks like in pretty normal light. She is beautiful, don't get me wrong. She's super colorful. Let me remove the gloves. All right, so she is super beautiful. One of my oldest orchids, my crown jewel pretty much. One of the very first bandas that I ever bought. Blooms reliably, beautiful. Sometimes the colors are not so intense. Depends if the orchid is stressed. This year, the coloration is pretty intense. But, you know, I'm not gonna say no to even more intense coloration. Damn, look at that. I really hope the camera can capture this. They're not so subtle. The difference is, it is amazing. Just amazing. And I was thinking, because I actually took a picture and I posted it on Instagram, I was thinking, I think people will think I put a filter on the picture and I was putting the phone with the picture next to the orchid like so and seeing if it actually looks like reality and it does 100%. The picture that I posted on Instagram is exactly how this orchid looks like in reality. It's that good. And this is because the colors are emphasized by the grow lights, by the barinas. And it's wonderful. I think this is one of those orchids that has exactly those shades that can get super emphasized by the barinas. So yeah, this is how she looks like in reality. There's, there's no filter on this footage or on Instagram. Uh, but obviously the real coloration of the orchid is not really so intense. It's just the light emphasizing or bouncing off of these colors and looking just a little bit different than how this orchid looks like in natural light. Anyway, I personally love it. In reality, it's, you know, because it's 3D, it's not really all that stark. It has more dimension together with the color. It's really, really hard to describe. It's like a neon, it's a neon color. So yeah, I really love it. But anyway, for today's video, I guess we're pretty much done. This is where my little orchid is residing. And as you can see, hopefully, the pink of the pot is a little bit more emphasized because of the lights. And I do believe it looks really, really pretty. Let me just zoom out a little bit so I can show you my little shelves. This is how they look like. Oh, the next video I'm filming is with this guy. This is a non-orchid plant. Isn't he pretty under these lights? Because he has pink leaves and of course the pink is emphasized. But anyway, yeah, I guess you can see why I think adding more texture to the shelves just looks a little bit better. I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, so for today, that is about it. This is my Liptotis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
And yeah, stay tuned for more repotting and more greenhouse work, I guess. At some point, a tour as well. <laughs> I don't know when. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. Hope you had a relaxing time. Hope your meal was good. Because I know, just like me, you guys commented. Many of you have your meal while you're watching the video. I do the same. I love it. I love watching YouTube while I eat. We both do. Me and my fiancé. So, <laughs> yeah. Hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!